Hello, this is Dana and welcome to the Orchid Hut. Thank you for taking some of your time today to watch one of my orchid videos. This one is going to be a remount of an encyclia or known today as Prospecia orchid to a cork bark mount. Now, a little bit of history here about this orchid before we get started. Um, this particular orchid, and let me just show you the tag on the screen before we get started um, so that you can see what this orchid is. And this one has never bloomed for me, although it has been in my collection for seven or eight years probably now. And unfortunately, it never has bloomed. So it is one of those orchids where you kind of think to yourself, you know, should I really be keeping this one? Should I really be tending, spending time with this orchid if it's not going to bloom for me? But um, I did decide that the last couple of years it was doing poorly because of my care. And I'll explain that in just a little bit uh, more in just a bit. But um, I am going to give this one another chance because I would like to see it bloom. And previously, this orchid was mounted on this piece of cork bark. And here in southeast Texas, we have these little critters called wood ants. And they tend to like to bore into various hard surfaces and create tunnels. And you can see some in the side of this cork bark mount that's old. And they tend to eat away. Uh, behind the root system of the orchid and therefore the orchid begins to fail and that is what happened to this particular orchid uh, I did leave it on that cork bark mount just a little bit too long and now I've been trying to care for it just with some damp sphagnum moss in the bottom of a cup to see if I could get some new growth some new roots or something that would encourage me to continue to try with it um, so this video is going to be about remounting this orchid and also discussing cork bark mounts in general because this particular mount, you know, needs to be thrown away. Now, I will, you know, need to remove the tag and put it onto the new mount for this orchid, but the cork bark mount is gone. If you can take your cork bark and easily snap it in half, it is too soft to use and you're kind of wasting your time putting another orchid on a piece of cork bark that is this soft. Now, this particular piece, you know, happens to be maybe five or six years old at this point. So, you know, they don't last forever, although sometimes they do last longer than that. But, you know, it depends on what climate you live in and how um, damp the cork bark mount stays and whether you have insects that are attacking it, like what happened to me. And this is another one where the same thing happened. It's another example of a cork bark mount gone bad. The wood ants ate from behind the root system and or the moisture eventually just deteriorated this. And, um, you know, now this is just, you know, too soft to reuse. You can just sort of see that it's a bit spongy and, you know, pieces are easily broken off and the whole thing kind of just feels a bit damp. So this is also one that will be going into the trash. Now the new mount for cork bark that I'm going to be using today, you can see that it's just much more sturdy. It is um, firm and hard. You know, I'm not able to snap it quite as easily. So this will be the new home for this particular orchid. Now in the upper right hand corner, I'm gonna put a link where I prepped this piece of cork bark in detail if you would like to go watch that first. This piece of cork bark is all ready to go. There's a little bit of a sphagnum moss pad that has been wired on. I drilled two holes and I wired on this sphagnum moss. It's a little bit damp. Uh, I just put it under the, the faucet just a little bit ago. And I made a sort of um, coat hanger style uh, hanger for the cork bark mount. So if you would like to see how I did this prep step, I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner. Okay, so uh, the other supplies that we need are my stretchy cord. If you've watched my previous videos for cork bark mounting, you know that I use this stretchy cord. You know, the brand doesn't really matter, but I do prefer 
the one millimeter in diameter cord. This really is just beading cord. If you just go to a sewing supply store or a hobby store, it's just in the beading section. And so I'll be using this. And then we need a little bit more damp sphagnum to put over the root system and of course some scissors and or cutters to help trim the root system. Okay, so let's have a look again at this orchid. Now it's been sitting in this cup for quite a while. And you know, I've been watching around the bottom, new roots, new roots, new roots, I don't know, I don't know. And then I see a little bit of a new sprout right here, slowly, slowly happening. And then something even a bit more strange, up at the top of this largest pseudobulb, and you can tell that this orchid really hasn't dehydrated all that much, um, there is a new growth from the top. I have never seen this happen, so this is new to me. But it's sending out a root system here as well. So my thought is to get this next to another piece of cork bark so this root system can take hold and so that this little sprout you know has a place to grow out. Now I have to say that when the cork bark, the previous cork bark mount was uh, healthy, it did enjoy growing that way. It did send roots to the mount, it did attach itself to the mount, so I know that this orchid does not mind um, growing on a mount. So what I'm going to do is kind of see the best way to position this. Now there is a little tiny older pseudobulb right here that I'm just going to cut away. Now these cutters have already been sanitized with the flame so no worries there. I'm just going to cut this away because this little tiny pseudobulb is really no longer supporting the plant in any kind of way. So that's gone and actually where it's attached is pretty dry. So I really don't even need any cinnamon on that. Uh, but I do want the new root system to have a chance to attach and I want this new little growth right here where my finger is to be able to grow outward. Okay, so I'm not going to trim away any of the older root system. It's really difficult to tell which of those roots are, you know, still working for the plant. So I don't want to inadvertently cut something away that's still supporting the plant because you know, that's not going to help in this situation as the new root system is trying to develop. And I'm just piling on the damp sphagnum here at the bottom of the mount to cover those old roots. And then I will be using the stretchy cord to secure it. All right. And hopefully at some point this new little, new little growth right here We'll send out a root system as well. Okay, let's see. I am going to have to figure out how to tilt it just a bit. And I'll get a little bit of the stretchy cord around it and then make some adjustments. Now, what I like to do is just make a double knot back here, and it seems like that this stretchy cord might be too slippery, too stretchy to get a secure knot, but if you make a double knot and pull it really, really tight, it does hang on there pretty well. Okay. And the sphagnum moss does not have to be super tight around that old root system. 
I am in the habit right now of giving this one some moisture every few days so as it adjusts to this mount I will continue to do that same thing and For this one, I'll bring it back to the front and make the double knot. Because this stretchy cord is completely clear, it's pretty forgiving about where you decide to make the knots and wrap it around because it you, you know you really can't see it. And at the end, of course, you can always choose to cut off the pieces that remain on either side of the knot. Now, one thing here, this is not ideal. Let me just show you this. Um, preferably, this pseudo bulb where the roots are would be a little bit closer to that cork bark mount so that they would attach. So I may temporarily put a piece of the stretchy cord just across that pseudo bulb so that it can be a bit closer at least until it has a chance to attach. So I'm going to work that cord down into there. We'll see if this helps. It may, in fact, be that it doesn't pull it all that much closer, but we'll give it a try. Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks like it helped a little. And you do have to pull this pretty tight, tighter than you might imagine because it is stretchy. Okay, that did help somewhat get it a bit closer and that stretchy cord is really not cutting into the plant tissue, so that's good. And what I might do is now put a little bit of that damp sphagnum around the back side where those roots are trying to develop. And over time, the sphagnum will fall away, dry, you know, break off. So its purpose is, for me anyway, mostly to just help the orchid get established. Let's see. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so let's cut off some of these tails and see if there's any other tidy work that we need to do. And sometimes if you have a few little pieces sort of hanging down, it adds to the organic look of the overall mount. You know, every little piece doesn't have to be perfectly in place. In fact, I may just trim this with the scissors. Okay. And so there we have it. Um, the new mount for the orchid and um, we'll see if it uh, likes its new home in the coming months. This one will have to stay under the grow lights for the winter but um, in an upcoming video I'll try to remember to give you a status update on this one. We will especially be watching this new little growth down here and be checking in on the root system that's coming from the top of the pseudobulb. All right. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please give it a thumbs up. The subscribe button will be coming up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and talk to you next time.